Hello and welcome to this talk on Clinical Speech and Language Studies in Trinity College Dublin. My name is Orla Galini and I'm an Assistant Professor in Speech and Language Pathology in Trinity College. Today I'll be speaking to you not only about what Clinical Speech and Language Studies are, but also about why this course may be the best area for you to pursue your further education. Do you have an interest in science, language and psychology, with good listening and communication skills, and strong social and interpersonal skills? Do you enjoy working with and supporting people of all ages? And are you a problem solver or critical thinker who can work independently and as part of a team with an openness to learning, flexibility, and an ability to adapt to different circumstances? If this seems like a description of you, well then clinical speech and language studies may be the best place for you to pursue your future education. Well, what is a speech and language therapist? A speech and language therapist works with children and adults who have difficulties with speech, language, communication, and or swallowing. And we assess, diagnose, and treat people in order to enable the service user to achieve their maximum potential in communication and safe swallowing. We work as a team with the person themselves, families, carers, and other medical and allied health professionals. So who does a speech and language therapist work with? Well, to begin, we work with children with a range of communication issues, including speech, voice, fluency, and language disorders, and also swallowing issues that may be associated with such disorders like physical impairments, intellectual impairments, oral and written language disorders, autism and mental health disorders, hearing impairments, and many more issues. But we also work with adults with a range of communication and swallowing difficulties that may be associated with neurological disorders, stroke, dementia, head and neck cancer, intellectual disability, mental health disorders, traumatic brain injury, and many more conditions. But the SLT does not work within a vacuum. While we work primarily with the client or patient, we also work with their family, partner, or spouse where appropriate, with a multidisciplinary team of medical and allied health professional colleagues, and with educational professionals where appropriate and many, many more, all to enable the patient to achieve their best possible outcomes. So now you know the basics, let's get down to brass tacks. What do we actually do? Well, to tackle that question, we need to know about what communication is. Communication is made up not only of words. Instead, it's made up of a range of different subsets of communication skills. And to delve in even deeper, we need to think about what makes up communication whole. For example, voice, nonverbal communication, language, articulation and phonology, fluency and pragmatics. So here you can see that the speech therapist deals with a range of different communication facets in order to enable the patient to communicate to the best of their ability. So now you know about what communication is, is it actually something that's important? Well, the ability to communicate is central to what we do, to who we are, to how we learn, and to how we relate to each other at home, at school, and at work. Communication difficulties can impact on a person's ability to participate in a range of different settings, including education, economic settings, social settings, and career opportunities. And a communication disorder that makes it difficult to understand or use speech and language to communicate and relate to others can impact not only on participation, but also on quality of life. Therefore, with all of this in mind, the SLT is a key healthcare worker as they facilitate the development of speech, language and communication skills of children and adolescents who are struggling in that regard. They enable people who've experienced a medical condition for example, related to brain injury, to regain functional communication, language, speech, and swallowing skills. And they help individuals to use assistive systems of communication or nonverbal communication where needed, all the while counseling an individual and their family so they may better cope with a family member's communication disorder. But the speech and language service is not a one trick pony. As the same muscles control speech, voice and swallowing, the SLT has a key role in diagnosing, treating and managing swallowing disorders. These swallowing disorders are known as dysphagia. 
and these are eating, drinking and swallowing difficulties that can affect all age groups, although they are common in older individuals who've had a stroke. As swallowing disorders can lead to food or drink going down the wrong pipe and into the lungs rather than into the stomach, resulting in pneumonia, the SLT works with other healthcare professionals and the client and their support network to minimise these secondary risks and to help to manage the dysphagia overall. With all of this in mind, your head must be swimming. So now you know about who we work with and a little bit about what we do, let's have a think about where the speech and language therapist works. Well, we're very lucky to be able to work in a range of different settings that leads to interesting and exciting days where no day is the same as the next. We work in a range of settings, including hospitals, therapeutic and rehab centres, schools, language units, community health centres, settings such as disability services and nursing homes, mental health services, private practice, and even the client's own home. So now you must be chomping at the bit and hammering down our door to come and study with us. So let me tell you a little bit about how you can become a speech and language therapist. So this clinical speech and language studies degree is a four years honours degree that gives you an in-depth in -depth understanding of communication and swallowing disorders and teaches you how to work as a speech and language therapist who helps people who may experience the difficulties that we've discussed. The award at the end is a Bachelor's in Science that's accredited and approved by the IASLT, the Irish Association of Speech and Language Therapists, and by the Regulating um, Board of Health and Social Care Professionals, CORU. At the end, your degree will be mutually recognised by a range of countries, which means you can work in different countries internationally, such as the US, New Zealand, the UK and Australia. So as I mentioned, this is a Bachelor's of Science that lasts for four years of study. The points vary year to year. In 2020, they were 529. And each year, there's approximately 34 to 36 places. Admission requirements do vary, so I would recommend checking the prospectus online. With regards to the leaving cert, at the time of recording, you required an O6 or a H6 in maths, in addition to a H4 in one of English, French, German, Irish, Italian, Russian, or Spanish, and a H4 in one of maths, applied maths, physics, chemistry, or biology, or phys chem, or ag science. And there is a range of GCSE requirements. You should consult this within the prospectus link given. There are also health screening requirements and students will be required to undergo guarded vetting. You should note that there may be additional costs for students who are traveling internationally and for clinical materials during clinical placements. So this course takes a spiral approach to curriculum that becomes more management based as the years go on, beginning with reviewing of typical development in year one, moving to natures of disorders and assessment, then into intervention within year three, and finally culminating in overall management in year four. So with regards to the theoretical component, to give you some context on how we deliver this course, we use a range of methods, including lectures, tutorials, seminars, workshops, and clinical supervision, with some online blended learning options, However, we do place a high emphasis on problem-based learning, which is where there's group-based learning, teamwork and communication at the fore. And this gives students an active and holistic learning experience rather than simply a passive learning experience of sitting in lecture halls. Students are encouraged to brainstorm problems as a group and to set goals in order to help them solve these problems. And students work together to collaborate as a group in assessing, evaluating and using data from a variety of sources to solve this problem. This helps students to acquire new information through self-directed learning, and then they present and share this as a group. Not only do we have the theoretical component, however, we also have a clinical component where students are encouraged to put their theory into practice. Across the four-year program, students have placements in a variety of settings, for example, hospitals, health centres, special schools, health and family centres, and across a range of client groups, including infants, children, adolescents, and adults. 
And these opportunities help students to develop clinical competency and employment readiness, all the while learning practical skills that will help them in their future work. To give you a little bit more specific details about the assessment that we use, we use a mix of exams and continuous assessment. And there's end of semester exams in Christmas and at summer. With continuous assessment assignments that are paired, group and individual throughout the years and clinical and practical exams that compose reflective logs and indeed clinical exams where you work with patients. And in fourth year, you take on a research project. So to give you a little more specific detail on a year by year basis, in year one, junior fresh, you take on such modules as anatomy and physiology, foundation clinical skills, phonetics, speech, hearing and swallowing, psychology and language acquisition. And you have a clinical component that involves observation, visiting centres and meeting with people who may have communication difficulties in conjunction with audiology clinics. Moving into year two or senior fresh, your modules include phonetics and phonology, cognitive and neuropsychology. Then you start to look at the nature and assessment of speech, voice, fluency and swallowing disorders, while also continuing on your lessons in linguistics. Then in Hillary term, you move into looking at language and communication disorders and their nature and assessment, while also completing ethics and professional studies as a core component of the clinical learning. Your first clinical component in this year is Practice Education 1, which focuses on assessment of people with communication disorders, and you do so via clinical placements and workshops. In year three, you're moving more into an intervention-based learning. And your modules include discourse analysis and dynamics of discourse. You begin to learn more about evidence-based practice in order to apply this to the intervention for a range of different communication and swallowing disorders. You begin to take on classes that will help you with your final year project, for example, research methods, statistics, and research design. And you also continue on with your practice educational skills, where you start to look at intervention and therapy for people with communication and swallowing disorders again through clinical workshops and placements in a range of settings. Then in your final year, your senior softster, you begin to look at advanced studies in communication and swallowing, and you have a focus on disability and society and reflective studies, integrating the principles of counselling and reflection, which are core components of your clinical practice. In addition to this, you will complete your research project and you will do your final placements in practice education three and four. And this will focus on overall caseload management as you progress towards graduation. So with this detail that you now have on how you become an SLT and what you actually do once you are an SLT, let's talk a little bit about what your experience in TCD may look like. So during your time here, you'll have opportunities to engage in a number of positive experiences, including a welcome event in first year, a buddy system where you're paired up with people in later years for help, international summer schools, you may have the opportunity to sit foundation scholars exams, the yearly IASLT student conference where you get to network with other students from Galway and Cork universities, and also with the postgraduate students from Limerick. There are a range of student awards, awards and prizes each year. There are a range of different societies that you can engage with within Trinity as a whole. And you'll, be get, you'll get to become a member of the strong clinical speech and language studies community, both within current students and alumni. With regards to opportunities for employment, currently there's increasing opportunities to specialise, for example, in speech, voice, fluency, dysphagia, language disorders, and there's ongoing opportunities for future research and education. You have opportunities to work in the public or private sector, even to work overseas with the mutual recognition agreement. And it's important to say that at the moment, SLTs are in great demand and there are long waiting lists and more opportunities for SLTs to gain employment. However, there's also the opportunity for continuing professional development. Within the department here, we've got opportunities for research and development, such as new techniques, new ideas, 
And we're always striving to provide best quality service that's supported by evidence. Within the department, you can do a variety of postgraduate courses, such as the postgraduate diploma, the master's in science, or a PhD. And if you navigate to our website, we've got instructional information there on how you can register for these courses once you're finished your bachelor's. So that brings us full circle. And now it's time for you to think about, is this course for you? As I mentioned at the start, we want you, if you are interested in science, language and psychology, if you have good listening, communication, social and interpersonal skills, if you enjoy working with and supporting people of all ages with problem solver skills and critical thinking skills, if you can work independently and as part of a team, if you're open to learning, flexible and you can adapt to any circumstance, we want you here. If you'd like further information on clinical speech and language studies, please do visit our website at the link provided here. And you can also navigate to the different SLT Association for Ireland, UK, and America. If you have any queries that you'd like to approach me with, you can contact me at O-G-I-L-H-E-A-N at tcd.ie. And I'll gladly have a chat with you about any concerns or queries you may have. Thank you today. For listening to this talk and I do hope to see you in the future as a student of clinical speech and language studies.